Okay, today we're covering yeah. CloudStation, and CloudStation is one of the tools that's provided to J and J Systems clients um, to um, make their lives easier, hopefully. And the idea is that um, you can store stuff in the cloud on our server, which is um, hosted in a secure location, uh, backed up in another secure location. Um, and um, then at any point in the future, if you're somewhere where you don't have those files, you can at least hopefully access the internet and get hold of them. So it's kind of, um, it's not a unique idea, plenty of people do it, but it's very useful. But the thing it's really handy for is emailing stuff. Now the reason it's handy um, is kind of in, in two, um, uh, well, two main reasons really. One thing is that if you want to send something big, then you can put something big in CloudStation or you can put loads of things in CloudStation and then you can share them that way, just sending a link to somebody rather than sending them loads of uh, files or big files that might get rejected. Um, file sizes are set by the internet providers um, at the sending end and the receiving end. So even though your provider might give you um, an allowance to send lots of files, the person you're sending to might bounce back because their system might not allow files of that size. So CloudStation is great for sending big files, but the main thing <coughs> CloudStation is great for sending stuff securely. Now, it doesn't, again, doesn't matter how good your internet connection is, doesn't matter how good the other person's internet connection is, how good their um, servers and their email setups are, sending email isn't secure. And the second it leaves um, your um, server and it's in the outside world, then it's pretty much open as plain text to, to anybody who knows how to grab these things. And so if you want to send something securely, like, um, like a pay slip or um, an account statement or um, financial information or a spreadsheet or anything that you wouldn't want the bad guys to get hold of, um, then the way to send it is by putting it into a CloudStation link or putting it into a CloudStation folder and then giving somebody the link to that folder and giving them uh, a password, preferably over the phone. Um, so um, I'm going to show you how it works, and then you'll know how to do it. That's the idea. Um, so hopefully what you've got here on the screen is um, the JJ Systems website. Yeah, good. Okay. Now you can go directly to CloudStation um, <coughs> from our website because it's the easiest way. And like a lot of our tools, you just go to Logins, and uh, it pops up, and then we can scroll down. And we can see there's various different tools that we offer there on the logins page. And the one we're going to look at now is CloudStation. And it looks like this, eventually. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, the, the hamster's wheel is going to need some oil on it. Come on. This isn't our server, this is my internet connection, which is not very fast. And um, doing a webinar at the same time, it makes it really slow. Uh, however, um, CloudStation looks like this. Now, if I click on the icon that says Cloud State, well, File Station, it comes up with a classic sort of uh, file browsing window explorer style thing, which is um, pretty straightforward to use. If I double click on uh, where it says CloudStation, <coughs> excuse me, it takes me into, um, into uh, my files and folders. And there's one here called temp, one that I created earlier. And if I double click on that, I can look in temp and there's nothing in there. And if I go back up to uh, where it says cloud station, I can click there and it takes me back up to the root. And if I want to <coughs> delete that folder, I can right click and say delete, which I thought I did earlier, but obviously I forgot to do. Um, <laughs> and then if I want to create a folder called temp, I can right mouse click and I can say create folder. And I can call it temp. I'm going to call it temp2, just for the sake of it. Um, and so it's all the usual sort of file management stuff, nothing really very exciting there. Now, if I use this folder, if I go into it, then I can add files. And there's a variety of ways of adding files. One is to open up um, your usual file management tool, or explorer, in other words, and then taking a file and um, dragging it and dropping it onto the, um, the, uh, the screen. Now, I imagine on the webinar, you probably just saw a big gray area pop up I didn't see in my file explorer um, because of the way that it uh, puts the emphasis on the application we're looking at. But all I did was drag a file and then that's dropped into this folder now. So that's now there in the cloud 
um, all nice and secure and available to me wherever I am in the world. An alternative way of getting a file in there would be to right mouse click and say upload to, and then it says tem2 because that's the name of the folder. And then I can choose the first one. There's two options here, skip and overwrite. And the reason it gives you these two options is because when you upload a file, if the file's already there, it's going to make a decision. But um, what it's doing here is it's preempting that, that um, question asking thing. So if I want to copy a load of files over, and I know that I don't want to overwrite things, I could just choose the first one. Or if I want to replace an old invoice with a new one called invoice, I can choose the bottom one. It's not very technical because um, the first time we do it, we realize what it's there for. But if I click on uploads, and now um, I can choose from a folder. And again, I'm going to choose file and say open. And it's now uploaded that file. So it's a couple of Word documents there, and it's taken seconds to upload them. So that's the um, that's the way of getting files onto it. Onto it. Uh, once you've got them there, if you, if you select a file, right click, you've got all the usual things you'd expect to see. You can delete it, copy it, <coughs> name it. Nothing particularly challenging. However, the bit that's um, exciting is sharing a file. Now, um, you can either share a whole folder. So if you've got a situation where you're regularly putting invoices or account statements or project um, documents in the same folder that you want a client to be able to access and access all of those files, then you can just share the folder. Alternatively, if you just want to share a specific file, you can just share the file. So whichever way you do, you'd either choose the folder, like temp2, and then right click and go down to share, or choose the file, like the password one there, and then right mouse click and go down to share. So either way, similar principle. So I'm just going to share this file called password protection. Now if I click on that, it comes up with a dialog box. It's not highly complex. It looks a little more complicated than it is, but it's in essence, it's really easy. If you just want to quickly share a file, all you need to do is tick enable secure sharing and then select share with others using a password and then give it a password. Um, you don't have to put a password on there, but that kind of does away with the bit of it being secure. So you might as well put a password on there. Now, um, when you do go to send the email and say, here's a link to uh, the document, blah, blah, blah. It's important to not put the password in that email, otherwise at the feast point of it, <laughs> because if it gets intercepted, it gets intercepted. Um, the best thing to do, if you're sending uh, a link <coughs> to a file, um, is put the meaningful password in there, but then phone the person you're sending the email to. Not just so that you can tell them the password, but you can tell them that you're sending an email with a link, and it's okay to click on it. Because as we all know, for cybersecurity reasons, you shouldn't just go around following links, not unless you're 100% sure. So we give it a password, and here I'm just going to type in password just because that's an easy thing to type in. Um, and then I could just click on share, no, save. Might even put my glasses on for this. Oh, yeah, save. Um, and um, I'm so old. Um, then uh, it'll be ready to go. <laughs> but um, before it'd be really big and clever with this, you can do other stuff. You can go to a validity period, and then in here, you can set um, ranges of times and dates. Now, the reason you might want to do this is to kind of crack down a little bit more on the security. And it could be that you don't want someone to have these <coughs> on Friday. You say, well, this, this stuff will be available on Friday, or this folder full of information will be complete for downloading on Friday. And so you could just change the start time and say, well, it's not available until Friday. Or you could say, well, these account statements are going to date next month or this time next week. Um, and I don't want people downloading again because of the standard stuff. And so then um, you can say add a stop time and say stop it at the end of the month. So start and stop times are pretty straightforward and they're really useful to keep it neat and tidy because that way then also it gets rid of the links with it when they run out. Another thing that's useful is number of times someone's allowed to download something. It might be <coughs> you don't want people downloading it and then downloading it again or getting someone else to download it. The guarantee of, of uh, copyright protection or anything, but it does just mean that people are less likely to, you know, 
downloading several times. So this is quite a handy little area just to kind of fine tune things. And all you do is you set your um, restrictions in there. In fact, I don't do that anywhere. So it's no longer going to be available <coughs> Friday at 7 p.m. And you can only have it twice or once. I don't say once. We're really secure on this document. The Rosalie save, that saves that. Do the good old Google thing. No, why on earth would I want to store a password? That would be insecure. Um, so um, so this is ready to go now, but there's one other button. <coughs> now, this is something that you might find useful from a marketing point of view. You might like this, Michelle. <laughs> this is um, a QR code. If I click on that, what it does is it gives you a QR code. And you think like, well, who the hell is going to use that? If you were to put a brochure in there that you wanted everyone in the world to have access to and you didn't care about the security implications because it's a brochure and everyone's got access to it, then you could put that in a nice secure folder and then um, rather than password protecting it, well, you can password protect it as well, but you wouldn't necessarily want to password protect it, but you could just go in, get the QR code, and then you can come and paste put it on posters and things for billboard adverts or on a website. And then someone's looking and going, oh, yes, I would really like to get a hold of that um, catalog or that brochure. They can just zap it with their phone and then download it. So it's a cute little tool and um, it's really easy to use. It just generates that um, code. So I've now done all of that stuff. Pardon? So I think that's great, actually. I've seen that before on business cards. Yeah. People put it on business cards, you know, so, you know, you're handing over your details and then they can just obviously get a bit more information later on. And it's modern technology. I like that. That's good. Yeah, that's it. And it looks, it looks yeah. really cool. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, so that, it's a nice little touch because it's, it's really easy to do. And then, like I say, you can just copy it, well, just screen grab it and put it anywhere. You um, so essentially all I've done now is I've said make it secure, here's a password, I've set a validity period, and now when I click on save, in fact, I've completely ignored these two bits here. Um, the share link is really important, which is why I'm definitely going to ignore it. And the file path, again, I'm not interested in that because I know where the file is, it's stored on the thing. Um, so when I click on save, now that shared link is copied into the clipboard. So I didn't even need to do that myself. It's now sitting in the clipboard, and then I can go into Outlook, and then I can just post it into a message, and then all that uh, the recipient needs to do is click on that link. It's easy as that. Um, if it's not password protected, they'll click on the link, it'll take it to the web page, it'll download the file. If there's multiple files, um, or um, if it's password protected, when they click on the link, it'll take it to a page, and that page will say um, enter password, which I suppose I could do if I was going to really be thorough. Yeah, <laughs> let's do this properly, why not? Um, if I now go to a web page and paste that link in, da, da, da. there we go, it's password protected. And so if anyone happens to stumble across that link by accident, this is what they'll get. But if they want to if I access the secure file, they need to type in the highly complex password. And then um, it says, there's a file here called this, do you want to download it? Yes, I do. And we're going to download, it'll download. And there we go, there's the file. And so that's a great way of keeping things secure and keeping them, um, uh, it, it, well, in the cloud, really. And the idea is that um, by doing that, you are also GDPR compliant because by um, putting it into a system and making it secure, it takes away the risk of somebody grabbing it. it you know, on the internet when it's been sent on an email. Um, but also, because it's gone on our server, and our server is in the UK, <coughs> physically go and put your hand on it, um, it matches all the requirements for GDPR compliance. So it's a perfectly safe way of sending stuff around. So that's um, that's sending things. What else is there to say? Oh, there's two other really important things. <coughs> on the notes page. Um, one is um, if you want to get stuff back. Now, a lot of popular cloud sharing tools have automatic systems where you can just um, put your files there and they upload and people can modify them and they go back to you and all this kind of stuff. That's nice and easy, but the problem is it's not very secure because what you don't want are files just turning up that you weren't expecting or your files getting modified by somebody <laughs> hacking the system. 
because that's a great way of getting the virus or getting some kind of problem with your data. And so for that reason, <coughs> with Cloud Station, these are two very separate things. If you want to share a file, yep, that's easy. We see how that's done, that's fine. Um, and they can download it, they can do whatever they like to it. <coughs> they can delete it, they can do whatever they want, but they can't touch the original on your, um, on your Cloud Station. Um, if you want them to give you a file back, then you just send an invitation to them to send you a file, and then you know where it's come from. And uh, there's a, a, a degree of an audit trail for you to see who sent it, um, and um, you can decide about downloading it. <coughs> so the way we do that is go back, back to my main Cloud Station folder, and I'm going to create a folder again. This time I'm going to call it, uh, I don't know what I'm going to call it really. I'm going to um, go to create folder and then decide on the fly, outside stuff, external stuff. That sounds better. External stuff. I could just call it external, but that'd almost sound professional. Then. So if I click on OK, I've now got a folder called external. It's a good idea to put these things um, in separate folders away from everything else with no subfolders in there, because then there's no risk of any confusion about what's being shared and what's being accessed from the outside world. So it's an empty folder. I'm now going to right click on it. And if I wanted to share the contents of it, I'd go to share, as we saw earlier. And if I click on that, we can see it's all the same familiar stuff. But that's not what I want to do. This time I want to put I want somebody to put stuff in it. So rather than saying share, I'll click on that, right click and say create file request. This is very similar to the sharing routine. There's a few boxes which are kind of not of interest to us because they're, they're kind of uh, dealt with by the system. There's a validity period setting where we can go in there and say, well, this is only available for them to upload once, or it's only available for them to upload between um, Wednesday and Friday. Um, we could also pass for protected, uh, where we can say, well, I don't want anybody putting files there. They've got to have the password to upload the files, so again, you type it's only really highly complex. <coughs> but the difference is here, that you can then put a message in and you can put your name. Now, the message that's there by default, this is nothing to do with us. This is one of these things that just looks like um, a scam email. Hello, my friend, please upload files here. <laughs> it's like, uh, you have won the lottery, we just need your bank details, and then we can see your winnings. I would highly recommend you change that. <laughs> Just put um, something sensible. Um, you can put your name so they know um, your name, or you can just leave it on whatever it is, or put something different. But anyway, there's a file request. And when I click on Save, that's now done a very similar thing. Go oh, away, wow, I don't want you saving my passwords. Um, that's a very similar thing to the, um, the, the sharing a file. So now I can send an email and I can put the link in it. And if I go up here to a blank page and um, press uh, that button there, it will come up with a box that looks like this. And this is what they'll see the other end. So if I paste it down to an email and emailed it through, and the recipient would get this and it would say, enter your password. And then enter their password. Um, and then, da, 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 it will look something like this. And so the person that's sending you the file will then put their name in the box so that you know who they are. You could be sending this request to several people. Well, I wouldn't really recommend that unless you're all working on the same project. But then here they can either drag and drop files or they can just click on add files and they can find stuff like um, this one. And there's a file that's being added probably very slowly. Go on then, upload it. Actually, it should be quite small files. Yeah, no, that, that added really quickly. Excellent. And so this is what it looks like from their end. Um, and if I exit out here and go back to our cloud station, from our end, we can just go into external files. And then we can see there's a folder created by Fred Blogs. Um, by request from me, and that contains um, that folder, uh, that file, I mean, that I've just uploaded. So it's really easy to use, all pretty straightforward and logical.
The other thing that is important to know about is the links manager and that is found on the tools tab. The tools tab has a surprisingly limited number of tools considering there's a whole button for it. Um, if I click on this it will show me all of my external links. There's one here which contains the webinars, um, there's one here which contains a file that I've just deleted so it says broken and there's one here which contains um, uh, file request. The reason this is important is because from time to time you should just go in and check this because you don't want it to be hundreds of links because it will just slow things down or it's likely to become corrupt or go horribly wrong. And so all of these things that I don't need anymore, I'm going to click on that, just click on delete. So yeah, I definitely want to delete it, that's why I clicked on it. And that one, and delete that one. Um, or I could click on it and do edit and maybe change your password or change um, some of the details. Or I finished with that, I can just click on close. So that's found on the tools tab. So that is probably everything you'd ever want to know about Cloud Station, I reckon.